What up, though? We back real fast in the chat box. Everybody hashtag make film fun again, because when you lose in film ain't about shit. But when you win and when you win in fantastic fashion, film uh, film gets real exciting again. So we're going to drop a lot of film this week because, you know, we got a bye week next week. So uh, we got to get a lot of content for y'all. But today I wanted to look at uh, Dak and some of the things that he did. Uh, he had a fantastic game, in my opinion, man. We're going to look at some some Keller Moore type stuff. And, you know, this Tavon also play a couple of things. Um, we're going to show some Zeke plays later in the week. We're going to show some Amari Cooper plays later on in the week. So we're not going to show them in this video. But um, I like to answer a lot of questions and address the vibes on the Internet, right? Because a lot of people feel like, oh, we're doing creative things on offense. Kellen Moore must have his hands back on the playbook and all that. I, I, I don't think that the playbook changes hands um, day by day like that. I don't I don't I don't think that's uh, that's how it works. But when I saw this play, I immediately thought triple option right and we've been doing that all year and if you've been keeping up with my film sessions you would know um let's take a look at some of those plays i got to pull it up right here pay attention this will be on the test um here's a triple option kind of look here versus the um versus the uh, saints and it was another one versus the giants it was one in preseason it was one versus the dolphins um it's not necessarily a triple option every time, but it's the look and it's different things that, that you can do from that look. For example, it's the same kind of thing right here. It's just that when you're in the National Football League, you've, you've got to spice things up and make it look kind of different. It's two elements that are very important to this, though. Um, it's the uh, implied handoff. And hey, this could be a handoff. It could be uh, like a read option type of deal. If we're reading somebody backside, this could be uh, like that could keep this and pull it. You know, this could hey, this could. Could be just a play action fake and we can um, throw the bubble to Tony or whatever. It could be a lot of things. Um, but there's this implied handoff and then there's pitch guy. Pitch guy or or um, or a toss guy. And that's what's important here. Those are the elements that's important. And if we look at it again in the Dolphins game, once again, we, uh, we're going to have a implied handoff. Boom, that right there. And the pitch guy, right? So we've been doing this before. It just looks funny because we did it with a different type of element. We did it with Tavon Austin this time, right? So the two elements, boom, boom, boom. We have our implied handoff. And then this is going to be our pitch guy. Now, in real life, this is a real life triple option right now. The Eagles just kind of got on us quick. So we had to execute things pretty quickly there. And I'm going to show you in the cartel view right now. But this is a real life triple option. Let me tell you why. Because let me move this over just a little bit. Because we're gonna end up reading these two guys, uh, Kumite Granola Hill, whatever his name is. Uh, he's gonna be our read guy, and this fella's gonna be our our pitch read, right? And then after that, we're gonna have a one on one situation with Orlando Scanger, whoever ends up keeping the football here. So what could happen? Tony Pollard could get the football right here, and it looks blocked up. You know, um, blocked up front pretty nicely if it ends up being that way but what happened with uh with uh kumite uh gravity hill is that he actually bites down on the run so a dag makes that read you see him looking right at him cool if you're gonna play tony i'm gonna keep the ball now we're in a two-on-one situation uh dak and tavon austin versus 23 whoever the hell 23 is um and if 23 is going to play Tavon, then Dak keeps the ball and he's in a one-on-one -on -one with Skandry. Dak probably runs him over there. But since 23 is playing Dak here, we see him get his shoulders turned in there. Dak makes the quick read, fantastic play by him, quick read, and he's going to pitch it out to Tavon. Now, uh, this is where it gets fun. <laughs> <laughs> this is where I start to talk a little noise right here because now we got a one on one situation with Tavon and Orlando Scandry. Somebody asked me the other day, hey, uh, you know, why do these why do these guys stop and restart? What's the what's the whole point of that? Well, if Tavon continues to go this way, then Orlando Scandry kind of gets the idea. He he can just he can read that, analyze it, and he knows the exact angle that he has to 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 take to tackle Tavon. Uh, right. But <laughs> what happens is if Tavon got to stop. Orlando has got to stop too And Tavon way faster than Orlando Out of his break Cha-cha real smooth <laughs> We take that thing in For the touchdown Why is this cat diving? What are you doing? You're messing up your clothes Good thing this grass ain't real You have stains all on your white pants all night Let's run it one more time without stopping it Tony's going to be our implied handoff and Tavon's going to be our pitch guy and Orlando Scandrick is going to retire in a few weeks if he keeps having to deal with this mess. <laughs> Touchdown by Tavon Austin. 
I just thought this was gangster. I ain't never seen somebody a quarterback sneak and get eight yards. I just wanted to take a real close look and see what exactly happened there. Um, of course, the offensive line are going to get their own film. And look at him. He got up flexing. Look at look at our quarterback getting up flexing. Mm. Uh, I'm gonna do a film session on our um, on our line later on. Man, they had a fantastic game in my opinion. That that kind of got a little pressure. I think he got sacked maybe once or something like that. But uh, for the most part, we're able to move him move him in the run game and keep Dak's feet clean when he was passing for the most part. But um, hey man, Connor Williams gets some good damn movement right here. Check out my son that y'all like to hate on. Uh, Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Connor Williams is gonna get some get some uh, pretty good movement there. Travis and Zach Martin, they're gonna get a good double team going on Fletcher Cox right there. You got to do what you got to do. Lay up with a nasty little cut, and everything else is just gonna be Dak moving his feet. And next thing you know, we got eight yards on a damn quarterback sneak. We ain't supposed to be doing that. Why? Why are we getting all them yards, man? You you'd have thought we'd have just you'd have thought we ran a, ran the counter or something. We getting all these yards. Um. I said on my it was a uh, it was a Cowboys versus Eagles breakdown video a couple days ago. Actually, it was like last Saturday or something. I told y'all, man, the Eagles don't really want to tackle you. You know what I'm saying? You can go back to that video and verify that they don't want to hit you. So I'm just kind of cool with putting the ball in the hands of our guys. Let Dak run the ball. Let Zeke run the ball. Give the ball to Tavon and let them decide on if they want to tackle us or not. And it really didn't look like they want to tackle Dak Prescott. So <laughs> that was fun. How about this play? Dak hits us with a fantastic throw, like a big boy, grown man throw. Um, first of all, what's going to happen is you're going to get just a tad bit of motion, and that's okay. And we know it's a zone look uh, for a couple of reasons. First of all, look at your uh, at your uh, cornerbacks, like their backs turn to the sideline. If they were in man coverage, they wouldn't turn their back to the sideline because you could take that and just, you know, smoke them with it. Also, um, you could just tell by, look at, uh, by looking at this corner here how he's freely giving Amari Cooper the inside. Why? Because of his zone coverage he got a little more help in there but if we're gonna identify zone coverage then we know that it's gonna be like a little space right up in there based on the route that we're running y'all haven't seen the route i have here we go just a little levels concept something easy um we know that the window is gonna be right there we know that this is where we want to get the ball into and y'all want to talk about Dak making tight window throws y'all want to talk about Dak throwing the ball in the coverage accurately to Randall Cobb right there take a look at it from the cartel if you really does it some justice right here boom 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 we're gonna pass up on Cooper for the biggest shot and bow look at this man look at this big boy ass throw from your quarterback that people doubted all off season come on my guy Get that thing in around the car. We're going to convert that first down. Big money. My cable bill was way too high. I reached out to affordablesticks.com. They sent me a fire stick, plugged that thing into the HDMI. Now I get unlimited shows, movies, and live TV. I'm a huge sports fan, so I love League Pass, Sunday Ticket, and I get the pay-per-view fights for free. That's something for the whole family. You can buy a fire stick for every TV in the house and still spend less money than you would on cable. That's affordablesticks.com. There's a link in my description. You should go click it. There's cool. another play that was fun, and all these plays are fun, but Tony Pollard's going to be lined out wide, and he's going to motion into the backfield. Hey, remember this look? Remember this look that we was uh, we was just talking about there? But we're going to run something a little different. This is actually a Dak Prescott quarterback keeper. Let me just run the play, and then I'll bring it back and show you what I'm talking about there. Bring it back and show you what I'm talking about. All right, cool. Let's, uh, let's do this. What I liked about it, and I'm only doing this for the Kellen Moore wrinkle, you know what I mean? Because I don't think I've seen this actual play. Um, actually, I'm lying. I'm lying because if you take – who was this Jamez? Yeah. If you take Jamez and put him in more of a wing situation or, more, or like more of like a, like a, like a tight end type of spot or whatever, then it's like a tight end lead blocking there. But we, we're doing it out of, out of this look, out of this look because we've run this look before. So what's going to end up happening, happening is Jamez is going to cross our face, but we're actually, the real fate goes to Tony. Uh, Jamez is a diversion, but Tony's the bigger diversion. Why? Because if you look, at your offensive line let me come back if you look at your offensive line everybody's moving left right everybody on your offensive line is moving left so we need to sell the image that we're running left so tony pollard is the real diversion here i don't think that um 
I don't think there was a there was an actual read for Tony to get the ball here. I think this is Dak Prescott all day because first of all, what happens here? Boom, boom, boom. In this situation, Jamez Olawale turns into your lead back. Uh, Michael Gallup is going to crack down on this guy. Jamez is going to lead back this dude, and you just kind of got to take your chances with you know one of these guys once once Dak gets there. What you really hope is that they take the bait on the run play and skate their ass over on the offense's left. But what ends up happening is uh who is this 55 here 56 he gives you he 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 actually throws you a bone here because he bites down on Tony pretty heavy. So Jamez could have blocked him, but he's focused on on Tony. So we get an extra blocker in Jamez. So Jamez and Michael Gallup just gonna be lead blocking for Dak all up and downfield. You know what I mean? It turned into a it turned into a pretty favorable game there. Let's take a look at it from the cartel view, so we can get an even better view of it. Um, Man, I think Tony Pollard like needs a lot more carries, man. We're going we going to get into that more in the Zeke Tony Pollard film session, but man, Tony Pollard needs a lot more carries, bro. Um <clears throat> but yeah, Dak uh the uh the uh, Dak run and you got two lead blockers in front of you. So, if you're only looking for like 3 yards but you end up getting 7, hey man, that's a win for you. This play was a wild one because honestly, the Eagles should know better. You know, they should they should I mean, like, did they really sell out 11 guys to go tackle Zeke? <laughs> For real? Did they really sell everybody out and leave Blake and Dak wide open just to make magic in the back of the end zone like this? And... Uh, wrinkle wise what I like about it first of all we get motion from Jason Witten it does a a couple things first of all we know it's man coverage because Jason Witten goes and 23 says hey man I, I want to go to the store with you well cool hop in the car let's go to the store but also what it does that it sells the image that we're running the ball to that side so you know we're going to put Jason over there we got a tight end over there already Jamez is going to go there Zeke is going to go there and uh, I'm assuming what the Eagles you know have here for you is that hey man if you know if Zeke says that he's going somewhere you believe that so everywhere he go we're gonna go with him what i think even though Dak has been fantastic for for all the games this season maybe except like the saints game or whatever i think he was solid there um i don't think teams have fully accepted the fact that Dak ain't regular no more i think Dak is like i'm on like you should everybody should be on on board with Dak. i'm on board with Dak. I fought the good fight with Dak. I've screamed on people in regards to my quarterback, but I think it's going to take the league a couple more games to realize that, hey, man, we just can't come out here saying we're going to like you can't say we're just going to stop Zeke and just let Dak beat us because if you let Dak beat you, Dak will beat you. You know what I mean? You just can't take your chance doing that. And I think Dak is earning his respect. You know what I mean? So. But in the meantime, if y'all want to sell out all 11 people to the run while we throw wide open passes to Blake Jarwin in the back of the end zone, do your thing, player. And I ain't even got a super technical breakdown here. This is just the last uh, the last Dak touchdown versus the Eagles, the one that he ran in. Uh, we're going to get a formation shift and a motion from uh, from Amari Cooper. Zeke gets covered up. Dak's going to be a grown man. Keep it himself. <laughs> I ain't got nothing technical to break down here. I just want to kind of just, you know, I just kind of wanted to show it just for the, uh, you know, for the culture, man, just to say that I did it. But listen, man, uh, like I said, man, film is fun. Film is fun when you're winning. Film is absolutely fun when you're winning. And uh, we're going to break down a lot of it. This was a fun win. This was a win that we needed. We're number one in the division. We need as many of these W's as we can get. But it's a long season, man. It's, we got 10 more games of this thing. And it's by week coming right on time. So I ain't going to talk y'all head off, man, because y'all going to hear a lot more, uh, uh, you know, um, coming from me this uh, this this uh, this week and next week. So stay tuned, man. We got a lot to do. But, hey, man, until then, y'all hold it down for the Doski, Woski, and the Peace. After canceling my cable, I saved $2,400 this year by switching to Beast TV through channelsforcheap.com. Some people pay $200 plus a month. I paid $120 a year. Or you can go $15 a month if that's what's convenient for you. You get 2,500 HD channels. A thousand of those are in English, and there are plenty of other international channels, TV Guide, and we get all the sports. One of my favorite things is multi-screen feature. So if I don't know what I want to watch, I can tune into four different channels at one time. That you can watch on four different devices, and it's available on Fire Sticks, Smart TVs, Tablets, and if you're on the go, you can watch TV on your phone. Hit the link in my description or go to channelsforcheap.com where you can get a free seven day trial. That's a whole week for you to just sit down and play with it and see what you like about it. Then come back and make a purchase. Because if you have any questions, go to channelsforcheap.com. Hit this little button right here and they'll respond to you immediately. That is channels number four cheap.com. The link is in the description. I highly recommend it. Let's do it. 
The YouTube Illuminati is taking money away from your favorite content creators, and people often ask the best way to support the channel directly. I tell them that subscribing to my Patreon. Just $1 a month would increase production and the frequency of uploads. Basically, that means more content for you. For less than a bag of almond M&Ms, you can support the channel, call dibs on requests for future videos, and you can have access to Patreon-exclusive material like my throwback film sessions. That's patreon.com slash Lombardi. I appreciate the support. Doski Woski. Salute.